Hi everyone, welcome to day 6 of Story Spark session and today we are going to take it a bit a notch higher. This is going to be a different session altogether, a concept which I have not talked much but which is very very important especially when it comes to technical presentation and that is called data storytelling. We all know there are a lot of data with us but how do we tell a story, how do we make sure that what we are projecting through our data is making sense to our audience. So I'm going to share screen and what we are going to do is we are going to take a few samples and uh, I will try to give a story about for one of them and then what we'll do is we'll collectively go through some more examples I've collected and we'll try to see how do we add a story to those. So let's start with the first one. So I got this good slide from a website named Databricks which says that if you are doing a storytelling with data these are some of the ste steps to follow number one is you need to understand what is the context what is it that you want to present then choose an appropriate visual what is the graph what is the chart or bar that you want to present you need to have that visual appropriate visual then you need to eliminate clutter because sometimes we have too much of data and we want to ensure that we are only representing data which is relevant for that particular audience for that particular story number four is you need to draw attention to where you want your audience to so even data you want to make sure that you are pointing out to the right direction number five is that you need to think like a designer where you need to think how i can make it better how i can uh, how i can put the right color right thing and the step number six, the most important is when you're presenting, you need to tell a story. So that's the whole uh, storytelling with data process. Uh, the image is by a website called Data Bricks. Now what we're going to do is we are going to go to another example. So this one I will take and then we'll collectively go through some more examples. So this is a dashboard of the call center analysis and uh, if I have to put a story around that this is one of those call center typical call center where they there is a lot of improvement needed while they have a number of satisfied customers but we can see almost 60 percent of the customers are unsatisfied which means is there are a lot of process that needs to be improved the customers are not at all happy and this is changing based on department to department but if you see in larger context there is not much difference so whether it's payment system whether it's streaming whether it's admin support it's it is around 60 percent overall where customers are not happy and they need to do something about it now what is interesting is their agents activity uh, is pretty good except one agent all the agents are 90 percent able to resolve the issue which means that there is a bigger problem with their call center. They need to look into the process of even if their agents are performing good, their customers are not satisfied. They need to find out what is the reason. Is it a process, documentation or something else that needs to improve? So you see, I put a picture. I didn't say this uh, all the data, but I've tried to put a picture around that they need to work on the process. So this is an example now what we'll do is next we'll go to another example and i'm going to give you about 30 seconds to think about how can we build a story about the graph that will show on the screen and then we'll go and uh, try to decode that so let's bring this one okay so take a look of it look at it for about 30 seconds and then we'll go around the room last five seconds okay so wake it do you want to attempt to tell this data story yes um, storms are uh, 
more distracted due to uh, phone calls and uh, other personal things mm. so they they couldn't uh, manage their time they couldn't address th- their customers on time so there are 20% in- interruptions i during the calls so it it uh, reduces the productivity if you would like to improve the productivity um, re- reduce the interruptions and distractions and increase the time management mm really good and, uh, that's awesome okay akaji do you want to try unmute yourself please unmute yourself i think you are unmuted so there is this boy deepak working in a call center and as he is uh, wanting to do his work but he is very much distracted because of his social media and the people keep coming and talking to him and he wants to go and talk to people he is not able to concentrate on his work mm-hmm. he doesn't know what tool to use in his work his time is getting wasted he doesn't know how to manage his time and more than that he doesn't even know what he wants to do he is not sure of what he wants to do mm-hmm. and because of that his productivity is going down and going down i want to help this boy in some way or the other by telling him how he can reduce his distractions and interruptions and improve his tools and to make him i want to ask him some questions how and why it is not allowing him to move forward in his life thank you so much very interesting and yeah very good attempt by both of you and again the same the data is the same and we all can build a story and we can say another way of this could be that no why what many people think that uh, they are not being productive is because they don't have the right tools but the reality is only 3% is that true that you are you are not productive because you don't have the right tool the major challenge the 50% of the challenge lies with too much of distraction like social media or constant interruption by colleagues so if you want to be productive you have to make sure that you are in a place where there are less just dis- distraction and less interruption so some of the things could be putting your phone on silent or using headphones so that people interrupt only when they have to interrupt and not get into chit chatter this has the potential to improve your productivity by up to 50% so that's another interpretation of the same data All right so let's do one more round and we'll see uh, i want to bring okay so this one i'm not sure are you able to clearly see this it looks like there is a lot of uh, it's, it's not clear right so let's go to the another one this is a, a one of the examples from gates foundation malinda and bill gates so let's take 30 seconds to think about the narrative and then we'll go around the room to tell the story Okay, last five seconds. <clears throat> All right. So let's start with uh, Dr. Alka this time. So, how would you tell the story of the Gate from Gates Foundation? So when I see a girl and a boy, let us say uh, Rashmi. No, oh, <laughs> the names have to be written. Anna and Gauri. they are born in poor families they are surviving just by very difficulty up to the age of 5 they have very little education and the family gets them married 21% of the people are getting married at the age of 19 or even before the age of 18 because of this early marriage they are not able to make their career they are not able to get the proper work in their lives 
and ultimately in their life they get less opportunities the main thing what i see here is the gender gap especially for the girl and the boy the girl the, the girl is going even lower down the stream because she's got married then she spends then she has all the work to do in the house which is completely unpaid work and 26% of the gap is in the workforce because she's getting less money and the boy is going up and up not very high but more than the little girl and uh, the, the gauri is getting less work she's just going and doing all the work and unpaid work getting children getting married and the boy is going higher in a, in his life getting more work more uh, more money but still the opportunities are not so much so there is a big gender gap which is shown in this diagram by showing that the boy is getting better opportunities than the girl over to you thank you awesome very nice um, yes ranka do you want to attempt yes uh, this graph shows gender gap um, boy uh, due to the uh, diverse environment he goes ahead and learn and look the other people but the girl uh, her growth is affected because of um, marriage and the children and in the they spend their time in uh, in kitchen so they didn't uh, see the outside world mm -hmm. this is the gender gap mm, great thank you very good attempt both of you and if i have to uh, again put a narrative uh, with my own uh, perspective it would be that there is lot of talk about gender gap in workforce and people say there is a 26% gap between uh, women and men but if we have to look at that we also have to go back and look at the data look at the perspective of why this gap is happening and this gap even though both girls and boy are even if they are born in the similar circumstances what happens is as soon as the schooling starts we can see there is a drop happening for the girls where uh, number of girls drop within 2 years of schooling uh, while boys continue and then around 1/5 21% of the girls get married before the age of 18 which means that they don't have more opportunity and they have to do the marriage and corresponding responsibility and also they get fully employed in immersed in the household work as much as they are spending three times on the unpaid homework where they don't get any money they don't get any salary but they have to do all the household works while the men continue to work on their career continue to work on the economic upliftment and that is why when you come to a certain age you see there is a 26% gap so if we have to fill that gap we have to start from the very basics where we make sure that the girls are not dropping the school within a few years they are not getting married just before 18th year and they are not spending too much time on household work and they are also very career focused so that is how i will represent this story uh taking it what is the outcome to what were the core now we are at at the top of the 15 minute so i am going to share a picture and this is for everyone who is watching on video that attempt this i am we are not going to do this over here but i will put this picture for 30 seconds think about what could be the story and write it either in the comment or if you are part of the confident storytelling hub put it in our whatsapp group for others and this is the picture five more seconds and i'm going to leave with this so thank you so much everyone for joining day 6 of story spark session tomorrow is going to be we will be completing one week which is going to be day 7 which is where we will also be completing the basics and different types of storytelling so after tomorrow session we are going to shift gears on the weekly theme of the story thon so tomorrow is also the story thon session 2 which is where we will talk about mindset and be limiting beliefs and empowering beliefs so from friday onwards 
except the gap that I will have for travel, we will be talking about the different strategies to work on limiting belief, work on visualization, work on different tools to basically get into the right mindset. So thank you so much. Have a great day. And as I say every time, until next time, keep learning, keep growing and keep going out of your comfort zone. See you tomorrow for day seven of Story Spark session. Take care. Thank you.